Hello to all of you. This is Dr. Dawal Mehta and let me introduce you to Smart PLS 4. So PLSM is an evolving statistical modeling technique. If you see the articles which are published in last decade, you can see the rise of it. The number of PLSM studies in marketing strategic manager and MIS quarterly. So there is an exponential growth. Now, why this growth is there? There's a very beautiful article written by the authors. And the name of the article is Progress in Past Least Structural Equation Modeling by Marco Sarstedt, Joseph Hare, Mandy Peek, Benjamin Lenigan. These are the, and Christian Ringer. Now, according to them, why Smart PLS is so popular? The top five reasons which they have found out in their studies that they can work on small sample size, one. Second, it can work on non-normal data. So for 114 studies confirmed to this, 760, 76 studies are talking about that they are working on non-normal data. Third, theory development and exploratory research is possible. So 73 studies are on, on it. It can work on high model complexity very easily. So 70 studies are there on it. And it can handle the formative measures very easily. Moreover, you can see the number of studies which were published on non-normal data in the time period 1981 to 2010, 102, and in the last decade, that is 2011 to 2020, 76 studies are there. 94 studies were on small samples in this decade in 1981 to 2010. So you can see the amount this is increasing. So these are the basic reasons why uh, people have started using more and more PLS SAM. Now, if I talk about predictive study focus, it, it is a development in last decade only. Moderation effects, 12 studies are found only in last decade. Higher order constructs, eight studies. Then mediation effect, three studies. From the time period 1981 to 2010, we cannot find anything here. There are some other reasons also why people have started using smart PLS or PLSM SAM technique. Because if the number of indicators per construct are less, then also PLSM can work very nicely. Now PLSM is considered to be the second generation technique. In first generation technique, we used to have cluster analysis, exploratory factor analysis, and multi-dimensional scaling for primary exploratory research. For primary confirmatory, we are having ANOVA, logistic regression, and multiple regression. So the PLSM is considered to be the second generation technique. The reason for this is that in the first generation technique, our basic assumption is that uh, the data, that is, data is error-free. Okay. In second generation technique, we try to identify the error component of the data. Rather, in the words of Chin, we will say, this techniques allow accounting for measurement error in observed variables. When we combine, that is, we, when we combine regression analysis with factor analysis, or we can say structural equation modeling is a combination of measurement model, that is a confirmatory factor analysis plus structural model, that is a path analysis or regression, we, we get uh, we get that is structural equation modeling. Now, in which scenario we should be using structural equation modeling? When the variables are bivariate and one of the variable is in metric scale. Okay, one of the variable is in metric scale. That is one of the DV or independent variable is in scale data. We use structural equation modeling. If both are ratio, we go for regression. I again repeat, all the variables, uh, the variables are bivariate and they are metric. If both of them are in ratio scale, we go for regression. But either DV or IV is in scale data like Likert-like scale or Likert scale, we use structural equation modeling. The difference between uh, variance-based modeling and the covariance-based modeling, there is a difference between smart PLS and MS. 
the objective in uh, smart pls is more a prediction oriented in case of ms it is more a parameter oriented the distribution in case of smart pls is uh, you, you can have non parametric data but it is quite necessary in ms that uh, the data is normally distributed or rather it is a parametric analysis smart pls can work very well on small sample size small sample size like minimum 3200 Uh, MS or Lizrel or MS M plus require large sample size that is hundred to eight hundred. Model complexity, large models, smart PLS can handle very easily. Uh, if there are fifty plus indicator variables, this can uh, MS or Lizrel can create a problem. Parameter estimates in case of smart PLS are potential bias. Here they are more stable because we have uh, the assumption of normality here, and therefore the parameter estimation are more. stable here indicates per construct in case of ms 3 or 4 are minimum required in case of smart pls we can work with one or two indicators also statistical test for parameter estimates uh, it uh, it uses jack knifing or bootstrapping here the assumptions must be met in case of measurement model uh, ms can only work on reflective indicators while uh, if we talk about smart pls it can work on formative and reflective indicators also goodness of fit that is a model fit we are having too many a model fit here in ms lizrel or amp plus uh, if we talk about smart pls it is still in a developing stage and therefore we are having less uh, measures of goodness of fit here now let's see the whole concept of structural equation model imagine that there is a football team which is represented by four players joe sio mark and dennis now the performance of the football team largely depends on the performance of this four players okay so you can see here right now let us replace let us use this same uh, concept for our for our study assume that instead of this players and instead of this football team we are having one construct loyalty now as football see this football team is not going to play this football is not going to team is not going to play on behalf of this football team this players are going to play and the performance of this players will depend the performance of the football team so similarly here also in our study loyalty is a construct you cannot capture loyalty directly and therefore you are using the measured variables s1 s2 s3 and s4 to capture the loyalty whenever you frame a questionnaire remember one thing construct will never appear in your questionnaire it is only the measured variables like s1 s2 s3 s4 they will appear in your question so s1 s2 s3 s4 are the measured variables loyalty is a latent variable also known as a construct it means that it means that that the performance of this construct will largely depend on the performance of s1 measured by varia variance extracted by it performance of s2 measured by uh, variance extracted by it s3 measured by variance extracted by it and s4 so whatever i get that is an overall performance is in average variance extracted now we are always looking for uh, the players which are well performing in the football team similarly here also we require the statements which can very well explain the loyalty and s1 should have a more explanatory power uh, and it will it should be able to explain more and more loyal uh, more, more and more loyalty similarly s2 s3 and s4 now how we will get this explanatory power and what is the measure for it that is we have already discussed that amount of variance extracted by s1 is the performance of this statement on loyalty now according to the hensler 
the family tree consists of structural equation modeling, path analysis, confirmatory factor, exploratory, multiple regression. But according to him, the root is bivariate correlation. There should be some correlation existing among these statements. Then only we will be able to run structural equation modeling. Now, what's the whole concept? Let us see. That if these two players are having some amount of cohesion or a correlation among them, then only overall the performance of the football team will be good. So similarly, in our statements also, we expect some amount of correlation existing among these statements S1, S2, S3, S4, so that they can be clubbed into the one construct that is a loyalty. Now, what are the advantages of SEM over regression analysis? Regression can only work on single dependent variable, whereas SEM allows for the multiple dependent variable. SCM allows for variables to correlate. Correlation is possible in uh, structural equation modeling. But in regression analysis, it is not possible. Regression assumes perfect measurement, whereas SCM accounts for measurement error. You cannot handle the variables if they are having a high multicollinearity among them. But if you are having but if you run the same analysis in structural equation modeling, it can handle multicollinearity very well. Now let us understand the concept measured by proxy variable. We want to capture the restaurant satisfaction, which is a concept. Remember, loyalty, satisfaction, staying intentions, they are all construct, they are all concept which you cannot measure directly. You require some variables which are the representative. I again repeat some players which can represent the football team. Similarly, here also you require some statements which can represent the satisfaction, restaurant satisfaction. So one of the statements is that the taste of the food was excellent. The service, the speed of the service met my expectations. The wait staff was very knowledgeable about the menu items. The background music in the restaurant was pleasant. The meal was a good value compared with the price. And all these things I will capture with the help of Likert scale. Strongly agree, agree, neutral, strongly disagree and disagree that way. Now a PLS path model consists of two parts. One is a structural model and another is a measurement model. Let us try to see the difference between these two. When you connect uh, the measured variable which are in yellow with the yellow one. Uh, sorry, the measured variable which are in yellow with the blue oval. The team players with the football team. This one, the small one. Okay, then we are talking about the measurement model, this part, okay. But when we are connecting construct to construct, that is from oval to oval, blue to blue, then we are talking about the structural model, inner model. I again repeat, see these are team players, one, two, three, representing the football team. Now, it may be very well possible that this is another team, the uh, hockey team, the players and the team. Then there is another team which is represented by another players. So when you connect the measured variables with the construct, it is known as a measurement model. When you connect construct with construct, it is known as a structural model. Now the measurement model is also known as an outer model. And when you connect construct with construct, it is known as an inner model. Now, depending upon the measurement model and the inner model, or oh, sorry, measurement model and a structural model or an outer model and an inner model, the test will uh, differ and the statistics will differ. Just as you know that your outer model is just like your home. These are the four walls of your home. And if I talk about outer model, we always want that my outer walls should be reliable, should be tough. So the outer model, which is known as a measurement model, we always go for testing its reliability and validity. Once our outer model is fixed, you can go into the inner model and that is a structural model. Now here, you check path coefficients and R square among the constructs. So these are all constructs, yellow part are all constructs. Just imagine that they are the furniture. 
you can organize your furniture in any way right you can organize your constructs in any way but the moral is that you can only go in the inner model once the outer model is reliable and valid smart pls only works on recursive model it does not work on non recursive model it means that if there is a loop or a feedback mechanism you can see here that the arrows are going then there is again a loop and arrows are again entering so if there is a loop like structure in your model smart pls will not work now there is a sequence of construct which we will always have to follow while drawing a diagram in smart pls it's just like a big bang theory that is a series of events which are followed that after this this event happened after this this event happened so say for example if i talk about reputation affecting satisfaction satisfaction affecting the loyalty now let me introduce a concept here of the endogenous and exogenous variable exogenous variable is more like a independent variable and endogenous variable is more like a, a dependent variable here exogenous is a, the reputation is a exogenous variable and loyalty is endogenous variable satisfaction at the same moment of time it is endogenous variable also and exogenous variable also now let us see the series of events reputation is affecting the satisfaction satisfaction is affecting the loyalty okay the biggest herculean task of the researcher is to determine the sequence of the construct for example some researcher assumed that the customer satisfaction precedes and predicts corporate reputation while others argue that the corporate reputation predicts customer satisfaction so theory and logic should always determine the sequence of construct in conceptual model but when literature is inconsistent or unclear researcher must use their best best judgment or you can go for experts opinion to determine the sequence however selecting the best sequence among the several competitive alternatives can be always challenging So for more videos on uh, structural equation modeling using smart pls kindly subscribe to my channel you can see my playlist in which i have already uploaded many videos which are related to the smart pls please don't forget to press the like button you can also follow me on linkedin and twitter thank you